Now, in the last video, um, we were successfully able to load Nginx on our image, and we can verify by going to the IP address of the EC2 instance we launched with that image that Nginx is in fact working. However, what I don't want to do is I don't want to see the default Nginx web page. I actually want to provide my own HTML file so that we can see our very own custom website. And, uh, and to do that, I have to actually explain um, where Nginx is actually grabbing this example file. So if we go to um, slash Etsy slash Nginx, you want to then go into the sites available folder. And here, this is going to be the config. So this is the default config. So um, we actually haven't configured anything specific from an Nginx perspective. So we're just loading this default page. Um, but if we take a look at that page, um, you'll see that if we go up to here uh, under the root line right here, this is going to tell Nginx where to pull the HTML file. So this HTML file that we see where it says welcome to Nginx is stored under slash var slash www slash HTML. So if we go to slash var slash www slash HTML, do an ls, you'll see that this is most likely our um, HTML file that's loading. So if we do cat HTML, uh, cat index, uh, you can see welcome to Nginx. So this is the HTML file that it's loading. However, what I want to do is I want to write our own HTML file, uh, copy it over to our image so that anytime we deploy an EC2 instance with that image, it already has our own website instead of using the default website. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Uh, and so we want to go back to the documentation like we normally do. And uh, instead of using the shell provisioner, we're going to have to find a provisioner that's going to allow us to copy an HTML file from our local machine onto the EC2 instance. So if I go in, uh, there's, so there's one called file, and this is going to be the one that we want. Um, but all we do is we specify the type of file. Uh, then we specify the source file. So this is going to be where the file is located on our local machine or the machine that's running Packer. And then we want to specify the destination. So the destination is going to be where we want to copy the file to into the remote machine or onto the EC2 instance. So let's get started on that. I'm going to create a new project folder. So I'm going to do a new folder, project four. And I'm just going to copy this example file as well. Actually, instead, I'm just going to copy that whole folder because I want the setup script as well. All right, so we've got everything that we had did before. Um, and as like I said before, our provisioners takes an array of provisioners. And right now we just have one provisioner, but we can add in as many as we want. So we just do a comma and then we can add in our new provisioner. So our new provisioner is going to be this file provisioner. So I'm going to copy this. And paste it in and we don't need those extra curly braces. OK, and so now we need to create an HTML file that we want to copy over to the machine. So I'm just going to create a dummy HTML file just for the purpose of showing us how the copying method works. And so I'm going to call this uh, index.html. And uh, you know, to create the boilerplate uh, code for an HTML file, if you're using VS Code, you can do HTML and then just click on this HTML colon five. So this is going to create all of the necessary boilerplate. Um, if you don't have VS Code or you don't have this functionality within your specific text editor, just pause the video and just copy everything that's written here. And I'm just going to create some dummy text so that we can just know that our proper image is being loaded and not the default Nginx server uh, HTML file. So here I'll just create an H1 tag and just write some random text, you know. And then beneath that, um, we'll put maybe like an H2 tag. And beneath that, we'll have another H1 tag. And then finally, beneath that, we'll have a P tag. All right, so let's save that. Now let's go back to our example.json config. And for the source, we want to specify where this file is located. So this index.html file is in the same folder as example.json. So I can just type in. Uh, index.html, but keep in mind that if this is located, if this file is located anywhere else uh, on your machine, you're gonna want to give the full path to it or even the relative path. Just you got to make sure you just give it the proper path to that file. 
And uh, we want to copy it to a specific folder. So remember, uh, we want to copy it to this slash bar slash www uh, slash HTML. And this should just about do it. So let's save that. Make sure we do a save all. I'm going to change into our project four directory and we'll do a Packer build. Yep. And I realized I forgot to change the AMI name. So this is going to be changed to Ubuntu dash nginx dash project four. And you'll notice that it looks like we ran into a couple of issues and we could see that it wasn't actually able to create our AMI image. And if we take a look at the logs, it's going to give us an exact explanation as to why that failed. And we can see that when we were performing a copy, um, it's essentially just running the SCP command and it's trying to SCP that file uh, to this specific location. And it says permission denied. And, uh, you know, when I first saw this, I was a little confused by this. So I actually went to the command line just to verify what's happening. And if we go to the slash bar slash www slash HTML. So if we go to slash bar slash www slash HTML, um, and if we just do an LS or actually let's go up a directory. And if I do an LS minus LA, you'll notice that the HTML file or the HTML folder is owned by root. But remember, Packer is logging in as the user Ubuntu. So for him to be able to copy a file to this folder uh, under HTML, he needs to have pseudo privilege. Now Ubuntu does have pseudo privilege, but you'll notice that nowhere within the shell documentation uh, do we actually see uh, an option to kind of use pseudo, right? So unfortunately, this is kind of a limitation with the um, with the file provisioner where it doesn't automatically use pseudo. And I was looking online to see if there's any other way of, um, you know, kind of navigating around this. And there's a couple of different workarounds. Some of them involve uh, a more complex understanding of the different features of Packer and are probably a little too advanced uh, for where we are at this point in time. And uh, I found that the easiest solution is instead of copying uh, the file to this directory using the file provisioner, which is owned by root, right? So, you know, just to show you guys, if I tried to do a touch, all right, if I CD into HTML and I try to create a file in there, uh, so touch is just going to create an empty file and I'll just do a test. I just going to say permission denied. I actually need sudo privilege. So if I do sudo touch test, then we can create that file. So let me remove that file. And once again, I need sudo for that. Uh, what we can do instead is we can copy the file using the file provisioner to a directory, which is owned by Ubuntu or someone that isn't root user or someone that's giving us full um, full access and permissions to that folder. And so in a good a good directory to use for this is the temp directory. So if we go to uh, our root directory and just do an ls minus l, and we take a look at the temp folder, uh, you could see that we have full access to this folder. So, we have, so all users have full read, write, and executable privileges uh, to the temp folder. So we can go back to our configs, and I'm going to change this so that uh, instead of copying this file to slash var slash www slash html, we're going to change this to slash temp. And then after we copy it to temp, we can run another provisioner that will copy that file uh, from temp to slash var slash www slash html. So I'm going to create a third provisioner. And this is going to be of type shell. And we're going to use inline configs because it's just going to require one command. And we'll do uh, sudo cp. And we're going to copy from the temp folder the index.html file. And we're going to copy it to slash var slash www slash html. And because we can pass in sudo under the shell provisioner, uh, the whole permissions issue is no longer a problem for us. So let's save that and let's run this one more time.
All right, so now that the image is complete, let's go back to the AWS console. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna delete this old EC2 instance. I don't need that anymore. And let's go to our AMIs and we should now see that we've got project four. So I'm gonna launch an EC2 instance with that AMI. All right, so let's wait for this to load up. And once it's done, we can verify that our new HTML file got copied over. And remember, uh, just like we did with the previous EC2 instance, to be able to actually uh, send HTTP traffic to this VM, we have to change the security group and allow HTTP and HTTPS. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna add HTTP for now. And let's copy this address. And you can see that when we go to this address, we can see our custom HTML file that we set up ourselves. So this confirms that our image now has our HTML file baked into it. So Nginx can then serve up this HTML file for anyone that navigates to the IP address of this server.